Swift students, in this chapter, we'll complete our journey in full stack development by creating a genuine social app that we're calling Snacktacular. Now, this is a full stack app because not only do we rely on the computing power of the iOS device, but we will also store data in the cloud. Specifically, we'll be using Google's Firebase and Cloud Firestore products, and we'll also support multiple users who can sign in using their Google accounts. Now, here's a quick tour. Users will be able to log in using their Google or Gmail credentials, and after successful login, anyone can see all of the restaurants that have been added by users of the app. Now, users save data, and it's served up via Google's Cloud Firestore database. You can sort the list alphabetically by distance from the user's device or by rating. Click a spot and you'll see all of the reviews based on a five-star rating system presented in a table view along with the average review score. Want to see a specific review? You just click it. You can see who left the review, when, and read the entire review. Now the interface in Snacktacular is context sensitive. It changes depending on the credentials of the user who's logged in. If you left a review, like I did for this Cheesy Fries review, since I left the review, I can modify the title, the contents of the review, the rating itself, or even delete the review. And any of those changes will be pushed out immediately to any of the other users that are logged into the app. The app will also show user shared photos in a collection view. You can check out photos published by someone who isn't the current user. You can see the details, but you can't edit them. Or if you posted the image, you can not only check it out, but you can also update your description or even delete the image. Now, not only will you learn how to build this app, but you'll also learn how to write solid, reusable code that separates out the database logic from the rest of the app. So it'll be easy to swap out the database with other cloud features if you want to change these in the future. Let's take a look at how a user would add a new restaurant. So we'll head back to the initial list, we'll click plus, then we can use the lookup place feature and that gives us full access to the Google Place Autocomplete API. It's super fast lookup engine and all of its worldwide data. Now any location that we pick will be immediately plotted on a map and the address will be added to the screen. And if you wanna post a photo or a review for the new spot, the app will confirm that you wanna save the location first and images can be posted via camera or photo library. Here's a pepperoni pie from one of my favorite spots. And if you head back to the list of spots, you can click on the users button to see everyone who's logged into the system. Sadly, they are all me right now. I suppose I need some more friends. And now for a bit of magic. So this is the real time database in action. On the right hand side is the app running on a simulator in my Mac, but you also see video on the left. This is concurrent video from my personal iPhone that I'm also holding right now in my hands. I'm logged in as a different user. I'm about to add a new place. The place is called Anna's Taqueria. I'm gonna add it on my actual iPhone. Here it goes, one, two, three, I pressed save. And look at that, Anna shows up immediately at the top of the list of spots that are organized alphabetically. That would come through to all of the users that are currently logged into the system. Not just me, not just in the simulator. I didn't even have to pull the refresh. That's the power of what we would refer to as a real time database. And when you're done with this app, you'll have a solid foundation for building really robust professional apps, whether you're a budding entrepreneur or a job-seeking professional. So let's code!